Yo, what's up guys, Census here, and today we're going to be making a combat route guide. A lot of you guys have been asking me for this for quite some time now. I've been getting a lot of requests to make this recently, and, you know, I'm happy to make it. So, much like the subtlety road guide, I'm going to be going over pretty much everything you need to know about the spec. You know, changes, since mob, talent choices, glyph choices, stat priorities, rotation, and some basic stuff you just need to know about the spec. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so starting off with talent choices, the basic cookie cutter combat rogue setup is subterfuge, current readiness, elusiveness, burst of speed, internal bleeding, mark for death, and venom rush. Now some of these can be switched around depending on your playstyle. I see some rogues run with shadow focus and I see some rogues run with shadow reflection, but most rogues at high rating don't run with shadow reflection because smart players know to kill that as soon as possible. And the thing about shadow reflection, it doesn't take on a lot of the stuff that you would expect it to, like it doesn't take on your trinket or any of the extra rogue buffs that you would get with damage. So all in all, Venom Rush is definitely worth picking up over Shadow Reflection. And the thing that made Shadow Reflection somewhat powerful when rogues had the 8 second kidney was it was able to pretty much turn that 8 second kidney into a 12 second kidney, but since that got nerfed, in my opinion, it's not worth picking up over Venom Rush. Moving on to Glyphs, the basic cookie cutter Glyph setup for 3v3 arenas or even 2v2 arenas if you're running with a healer is the Glyph of Disappearance, the Glyph of Blind, and the Glyph of Recovery. And of course a lot of these can be switched around like you could switch out the Glyph of Disappearance with the Glyph of Faint or you could switch out the Glyph of Recovery with the Glyph of Recuperate say you're running just you know skirmishes or you're running BGs or something. So a lot of these can be switched around this is just pretty much your main setup for 3v3 arenas and for 2v2 arenas if you're running with a healer. And the reason why you want to run with the Glyph of Recovery and the Glyph of Disappearance for 3v3 arenas is because the Glyph of Disappearance pretty much puts your Vanish on a 1 minute cooldown and it could be utilized for peels or it could be utilized for other reasons. And the reason why you want to run with the Glyph of Recovery for 3v3 or 2v2 arenas with a healer is because it will increase all healing you get by 20% as long as you have recuperate active. Now at first that may not seem like much, but when you think about how much healing you receive throughout an arena match, it definitely adds up. And one quick little side note, the poisons you want to run with are crippling and wound poison. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about how the spec actually works. Starting off with Bandit Skyle, essentially what this does, every time you get up to four combo points by spamming Sinister Strike, It'll increase your damage done by giving you something called insight and essentially you start off with no insight no damage increase or anything like that and then when you get four combo points by spamming sinister strike it'll increase that to shallow insight and that'll increase your damage by 10 percent then four more combo points after that it'll increase your damage by 20 percent and that's called moderate insight and then four more after that it'll increase your damage by 30 percent and that's called deep insight now deep insight is really the only one you want to be on when you pop killing spree but there are going to be situations where you can use killing spree at shallow and moderate insight, but you really kind of take a gamble when you do that. So you really pretty much for the most part only want to pop killing spree when you're at deep insight. Now the reason why I say sometimes you want to use killing spree at moderate insight is because what good teams are going to try to do to you in high rated arena is they're going to try to CC you until your buff is gone. So sometimes you might have to actually use killing spree at moderate insight just because of that fact. But really you don't have to worry about that too much unless you get up to 2200 or higher MMR. Alright moving on to combat potency and essentially all this does is tell you that it's better to use two swords over two daggers as combat spec. And finally let's talk about ruthlessness. Now what this does for each combo point you spend on a finishing move such as eviscerate it will decrease the cooldown on killing spree, sprint and adrenaline rush by two seconds. And it gives all your finishing moves a 20% chance to increase 25 energy. Now let's talk a little bit about stat priorities. The stat priorities for combat spec are mastery, crit, haste, and multi-strike. And also like I mentioned before you want to use two swords over two daggers. You also want to use the mark of bleeding hollow enchants on your weapons and you want to put Mastery enchants on all your gears, so ideally you want to get the Gift of Mastery enchant on your cape, on your necklace, and on your rings.
Alright guys, that's pretty much it. But if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment and I'll try my best to get back to you. And as always, thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time.